Hello, friends. Harosha Shipe here with another episode of Mr. Robot, or not to say Mr. Robot, but F Society RSC podcast. My live reaction to the latest episode, which is episode four, Metadata. Sorry I was a little late. I had some things I had to do in the evening, so I had to watch the replay. So, a couple things that stuck out stuck out for me. One is a confirmation that there is a time date, that everything is going to be compressed for the next 10 days. Um, <clears throat> that everything's still taking place in 2015, and uh, September 29th is the date. So there is a timeline. Uh, Angela, man. Again, I called it very early. She's moving up the charts of the villain list. Uh, don't think she's a competent villain, but she's definitely villainous. So, I mean, she's she's getting things done. She's knocking people out. She's corralling people. Tyrell, I uh, suspect it, but it's now confirmed. You know, Tyrell knows about the split personalities. Very frustrated. Has some serious anger issues. Got totally lied by lied to by Irvin that his wife is, you know, still there. Which makes me think that uh, Tyrell is going to get it. Uh, White Rose again with a deep bench. She uh, is pulling off the whole Iran is part of F Society type of deal with the uh, uh, Patsy videographer, if you will. But the second thing that really stood out for me really is the shift in Darlene. How she's, she's struggling to help her brother begins to realize when she feels sees a full weight in depth of you know the other guy the other him if you will Mr. Robot and her his association with Angela and how deep this is that she she can't save Elliot and the only way to stop stage two which is blowing up a building which uh, Darlene knows is going to kill a lot of people and you kind of see the weight of it like I'm going to talk a bit more about it in the review, but if you look at just, again, the background of just the decay of New York and the suffering of the people, I mean, she even says it on the subway to this random uh, pickpocketer, that she feels very responsible, and you see the toll on the portrayal of what she's going to do, and she's going to, you know, she's fully committed to flipping, because she wants to stop stage two, she wants to stop the, the destruction of the state, you know, the building, the death of people, but also the, 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 as she calls it, the stealing of money from everybody. Uh, what, what it is that they've done. Um, she's realizing how much they really have fucked up, if you will. And uh, she's very fatalistic. I, I think she realizes that she, even if she, as she stated to Dom, if she has the immunity uh, agreement, she, she's going to lose Elliot. And she might end up losing her life. That's why she, she told Elliot, we're going to have a vengeance pact. And I'll get into that in the full review. But, yeah, she's fully committed. And she's, she's not a hero. And I, I think when I talk about next week's episode, the special next week's episode, um, about the three faces of Elliot, uh, I'm going to kind of maybe do a second one about how there are no heroes in this show. Now, I don't even think, maybe the closest we get is Dom, might actually be what we considered a hero. But uh, there's, you know, there's no true heroes. F, you know, F Society is not a hero. White Rose, Dark Army. Evil Corp, Angel, there, there are no heroes. There's not even greys. It's just all black and bad. Maybe just slightly, you know, slightly black to very dark, dark. Whatever that uh, new black that was made up that is, you know, sucks the light. And there's the blackest black in the, in the world, which I think you can say is White Rose. Um, yeah, there's, there's no heroes in this. Um, I think stage two is going to go off, but maybe it might not go off the way people think. I think the unstability of Tyrell Relic is going to be the kink in all of this. Because as soon as he knows that Joanne Wellick is dead, and he has no idea where his kid is, he is going to wreck the world. We just we saw a hint of that when he got really pissed about the deliveries and how it was all fake. Uh, oh, I do like, just a little tidbit. I do like the fact that uh, when Irvin and Tyrell Wellick were talking about stage two and trying to get it back on track, and Irvin tries to pep, pep, you know, pep, you know, build up uh, Tyrell Wellick's, uh, I want to say self-esteem, but build him up, you know, saying he's the god and all that. It sounded like a like 
like one of those eighties montage, especially the music in the background where <laughs> Arvin is like the the guru that's supposed to train the hero, in this case Tyrell Wellick, and build him up in the confidence because Tyrell doesn't think he can really do it or pull it off and Irvin's giving him the big old speech that's supposed to rally the hero around. And of course in all those movies like the the of course the guru of course uh like dies later on after passing on this you know wet um knowledge and wisdom to to the young hero uh pumping him up and stuff it just it just struck me personally as like a, one of those 80s montage guru things so keeping up the horror aspe aspect of it uh it was very like how they were filming it it was very like if you saw those old movies made from the 70s and 80s of how the decay of, the, of new york at the time before they like Rebuilt and, dis and corporified and gentrified and Disneyfied New York. Um, it looked very much like Death Wish, uh, Mean Street, uh, even Midnight Cowboy, if you will, like the garbage and the decay. A little bit of, what is it, uh, Escape from New York. Just, you know, things aren't walled off. It was a bit of that. Uh, yeah. Um, huh. That's all I can think of at the moment. I'm sure I have more thoughts. I'm going to have to view it again to see if I missed anything. But, you know, everything's coming to head. Everyone's, like, everyone's moving in position, if you will, getting further and further along to where they're going to spring the stage two trap, if you will. Um, it's interesting how people are, are somewhat moving along in parallel tracks uh having all these hidden agendas and, and pivoting and moving around if you will to try to get things moving along with this whole stage two thing but yeah uh it's very emotional very heavy episode uh you're seeing the further breakdown of elliot and even to some extent mr robot as characters emotionally if you will um, a lot of emotional breakdowns, a lot of emotional breakdowns in this episode, which I really like because it's it's showing that there's consequences in this world. Uh, just beyond the, you know, the death, we saw like uh, Joanne Wallach dying from the consequences of her actions. But this, the decay of New York and the, the financial infrastructure, even though there seems to be like people are still humming along or whatever, it's kind of akin to the Depression where there was a lot of people in the country uh, and the world over suffering, but there were still people that were either getting by, um, kind of in the middle, treading water, if you will, and then prospering. And you're, you're kind of seeing those different levels all around. But I, I enjoyed the episode. It was great. It was fascinating. The tension is just getting more and more ratcheted up. Uh, the preview to the, to the next episode seems like there's going to be an explosion of some of that tension. But I think it's going to just ratchet it all the way up to like pretty much like the last episode. Where things are so tense and you're like... The best I can give like a visual kin to it is like um, the first Mission Impossible when Tom Cruise... Uh, you know, Ethan Hawke uh, is going in, breaking into the CIA, and it was like that, oh, he had to be silent, and his body heat, and he just got dropped, and you're like, <gasps> making sure he doesn't sweat, like, from Golden Child or anything like that, to try to get the, the hidden drive that they needed to get. It's, it's, it, I think it's going to be tense like that, where you're waiting in anticipation. Still very Halloween-esque. Like I said, it's, you know, the horror aspect of things, as in, like, an undercurrent of the show. Um, I do think we this kind of like with the whole 80s guru vibe of Irvin and Tyra Wellick, uh, it, I do think we've seen a, like a kind of like the rise of a villain instead of, instead of a rise of a hero, we're seeing a rise of a villain now that that Tyra Wellick is in charge of Dark Army, or at least has the full weight of Dark Army's resources, not necessarily in charge. Uh, but I think Irvin's going to get it, and I think Tyra Wellick is going to do it, or yeah, because um. He lied. <laughs> he lied hardcore, really. And I'm surprised Tower Wellick didn't pick it up because he can s sense it like a change in the in the tenor of Irvin's voice, if you will. Where he's still cool, calm, and collective a little bit, but he lost he lost his sarcasm because everything he says to pretty much Tower Wellick and to Elliot and Angela to some some extent has a bit of sarcasm to it, and he lost that. And that should have been like a clue. Elliot would have noticed. Mr. Robot would have noticed. Uh, I think Darlene would have noticed. I think Angela would have picked it up real quick. But Tyrell, Tyrell didn't pick it up. Um, 
but yeah, more layers, more pieces moving along in the board, and it would be interesting to see. I don't know, though, if Price is going to make good on his word in uh, firing Elliot. I think he might actually position Elliot somewhere else because now he knows that Elliot is an asset. Uh, he knows that Angela pretty much is working for Dark Army, so he might take an interest in Elliot in and of itself if he doesn't already know all about Elliot to begin with. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Again, no Trenton, no Moby, no Beyond. We're four episodes in, and they haven't popped up yet. So I don't know if they're dead, or they're working on reconfiguring the encryption keys so they can decrypt that data. Yeah, that's... that. It's a new where are they, like last season was where is Tyra Wellick. That was where's Trenton and Moby and Leon, you know, the three amigos, if you will. Uh, it'll be interesting to see when they spring up and how they are positioned because they will put a kink no matter what, whether it be on behalf of Dark Army, whether they know it or not, or against Dark Army or, or everything going around. It'll be interesting to see how they, they fit into this season. That's it. That's my reaction. Another great episode. Another enjoyable episode. I kind of like all the emotional layers and stuff in the episode. It was very tense. Again, I felt like at any moment I thought Darling was going to get snatched by somebody. Like either Dark Army, the FBI, or just some random person. Like random violence in the street. I'm, I'm surprised that we haven't seen, I mean, we've seen some police, a little, little police presence. But I ha I'm surprised there hasn't been like any National Guard or any more signs of violence or in the background about the rise in crime rate, which typically happens during, you know, economic crisis. You can see, like, the we saw for the pickpocketing, you know, the pickpocketing always occurs, but a rise in, in violence level or distress, like, there's not any riots or burnt out buildings. I know during the housing crisis, you know, the 2008 collapse, like, people were um, pilfering homes that got abandoned and taking the copper out and the uh, burning homes for insurance purposes. Um, we're seeing boarded up stuff, but I'm surprised we're not seeing ac actual destruction. And maybe that'll be something that'll be slowly building up to. But that's it. You know, that's all my thoughts. Uh, thank you for listening, friends. And uh, until next time, um, yeah. I'll see you again, friends.